Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I am George. We're all George. So, will the Bitcoin and crypto rally continue? We had a pretty good rally this morning, and it's still not bad. It has come back down a little bit. I actually said that this morning. I thought it was going to come down, and it did. But the question is, will the rally continue? Well, let's discuss that. What's going to happen this weekend? What's going to happen next week? Let's discuss what's going on. And you guys are in for a treat because today is Friday. Today's Friday and I'm feeling good. And that means it's giveaway day. So make sure you stay till the end of this stream. All right, let's do this. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified. But in case you don't, follow me on social media and... Check out all the latest news, article, and guides at CryptosRUs.com. Welcome, 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 guys. Hopefully you guys are doing okay, although there are some people in the live chat that is not passing the vibe check. <laughs> so many people. I don't know if they're trolling or just being a Debbie Downer or they're wishing things come down, but every time Bitcoin comes down a little bit, you know, all these people that's claiming doom and gloom and how Bitcoin's dropping to 28,000 and this and that. Just take, take a breath, take a chill pill. All right. So this is where we are. Bitcoin is at 44.2. This morning, it was a little bit higher. And I did say that, you know, short term indicator does, does look like Bitcoin is overbought. So it'll probably fall. But I was hoping, hoping that it could stay right around this 44.5 and it looks like it did not we're a little bit under that so what we really want to see is bitcoin come right back up and utilize this as a support which it very well can do a lot of the short-term indicators have now reset coming down from our high of 45.1 something like that 45.2 and now we could be building that strength once again, but not all is lost, obviously. Today, there are still a lot of greens, a lot of projects in double figures. So look at that. I mean, look at those greens, right? So obviously, I'm going to go over some of them, talk about why some are doing very well today. Um, but this weekend, you know, we don't really have anything. We're in the last few days of this month. Right, we got one more week, a little bit less than a week. We don't have expirations to worry about. That was actually today, and it's over. And it was really non-eventful, right? The last few expirations non-eventful. We had an options expiration, which is the largest today. Futures expiration from CME, which is the largest of the month today. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. So overall, Bitcoin and crypto, like I've been saying, is on an uptrend. And a slow study uptrend is what we want. Something like this is actually what we want. We actually don't want something like this, right? Whenever I use the word rally, people are like, oh, it's not a rally. Look at, you know, the times before where it rallied like 5,000 points in a day, right? But that's when, you know, it's not sustainable. And whenever you have huge rallies that you tend to have the inverse, right? Look at these huge rallies. We have the inverse happen right afterwards. But this time, we're going slow and steady upwards. That's actually what we want to see. And if you guys have been paying attention to what I've been saying over the last however many years, you'll know that Bitcoin is going in the right direction, especially now, especially with the global attention it's getting. Um, but what is going on today? Before I get into some of the altcoins I want to talk about real quick, uh, the U.S. market turned red. And it's not because Janet Yellen spoke about China sanctions. Um, I do believe it's due to this. So many people, many people are anticipating that the U.S. will have a recession. And this is one of the very first kind of glimpse into that. Uh, because now we're starting to see home sales shrink. Right? So... Uh, home sales in February shrinks 4.1%, uh, which is more than expected. And uh, new home sales also shrunk last month. So basically, we're starting to see effect of rate hikes. Okay, rate hikes 
mortgage hikes, I mean, mortgages went up over a point within like two weeks, right? So when mortgages are more expensive, when the interest rates on mortgages are more expensive, people tend to stop buying. Although it's a little bit skewed because homes, at least in my area, is still, still, still like flying off the shelves. Like you can't literally buy a home unless you're paying like over asking price right now. So we're not that bad yet, but this is kind of like a precursor of what may come with increasing rate hikes and with the slowness of the economy, right? So I do believe this is what brought the U.S. markets down today, although it's just really kind of kind of even, right? Um, so not, not that bad, not horribly bad. Um, and also this morning, it does seem like uh, the U.S., is going to get a lot more buying. Uh, EU strikes a gas deal with the U.S. So because of all the stuff that's happening with Russia, uh, the EU is trying to sever its ties or become less dependent on Russian gas. And now they will be buying from the U.S. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. All right. Now, relating to crypto... This is very positive. Some people asked about this. There was fears that the EU was going to ban Bitcoin because they were going to ban proof of work. They, that did not happen. It was struck down as soon as it was proposed. So there are many that realize that Bitcoin is definitely not to be messed with. You don't want to mess with perfection. Okay. Um, and we have a lot of allies. A lot of people really 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 believe in bitcoin and we have congress people we have parliament people we have global awareness global i don't know what you say global adoption a global likeness from everyone so no one really wants to mess with perfection at this point so that's very positive what else is positive? Um, I mentioned about Congress people. Uh, Senator Loomis and others are working on crypto legislation. Basically, you know, providing the regulation that, that crypto somewhat needs, but making sure that innovation isn't halted and making sure that progress still continues forward. Okay? So rather than have Chair Powell or or Janet Yellen, or anyone else, you know, kind of take a stab at it. That's what this is really meant for, right? Uh, kind of just like set the terms, favorable terms, and try to get it pushed through. <laughs> so not to be more, not to be restrictive, and overall be very positive and pro crypto. And this is, this is good. This is good. But it's, Early stages, early stages, and of course we know that Biden's executive order, uh, all the other agencies and branches, um, you know, they're coming up with their kind of their own ways to look at and regulate crypto, and we'll see how positive they turn out to be. So, gotta wait for that. All right, now other good news, good news in terms of adoption, Bitcoin addresses uh, crossed over 40 million for the first time first time ever in history 40 million is a lot but think about this okay think about it most of you guys most of you guys have more than one wallet right i know i have like 10 at least um and this counts with exchanges and wallets mobile wallets and hardware wallets and everything else right and most of you guys probably have anywhere from two to five to ten so if you take let's just take 40 million and you just cut it by a tenth and go down to four million right or let's just be conservative cut it down um 75 percent and go down to 10 million 10 million bitcoin wallet addresses there's only 10 million people that actually hold Bitcoin. How little is that? 10 million out of 8 billion? So think about that, right? Think about when 8 billion people 
is <laughs> jumping into Bitcoin, right? Right now, you have about 10 million probably individuals, companies, and uh, and uh, and funds that probably hold it. But think about when there's 8 billion plus fighting for Bitcoin. This is how early we still are, right? So if you put that into perspective, you realize how <laughs> how early it is. And even to own like 0.1 Bitcoin makes you so far ahead of the game. It's, it's unimaginable, really, compared to when 8 plus billion are fighting for it. So think about that. Think about that. All right. Other good news. Ethereum. Ethereum is coming up pretty good. And that's because there are a lot of whales that's buying Ethereum. Just like Bitcoin reserves, Ethereum reserves keep dropping. And there's just more and more and more buying. Right? That's why I've been saying Ethereum is not going to go away. It's, it's, its demise is greatly exaggerated. The total value locked is still over 55% of all liquidity locked. 121 billion just in DeFi, right? And that's not counting NFTs, not counting um, tokenization, ERC-20 standard, not counting bridges. I mean, there's just so much, right? So Ethereum is definitely still moving in the right direction, of course, when Ethereum 2.0 comes out. Probably will get more, even more attention. And there are a lot of institutions also involved with Ethereum at this point, so... There you go. Yeah, I'm not taking into account of businesses. And businesses, I mean, there's a lot of businesses out there. A lot of businesses out there that's also involved and holding Bitcoin. But I know this for sure. Anyone that's been in crypto for even, even six months have more than one address for sure. For sure. Just think about if you're using three exchanges or four exchanges or you have a hardware wallet, that's like already four, right? So I think the number is very, very small. All right. Um, other things uh, today, Phantom, just this morning, I talked about Phantom having a pretty good day. Uh, even with the recent this fall from this morning, Phantom was still, I think, around 140 which, man, if you took advantage at $1, uh, you would be up pretty substantially. Yeah, it's still at 142 right now. I think that's even with the, with the fall from, from top. Or maybe it may be a down a little bit. But Phantom, I said, don't ignore. I was looking over what Phantom, any new developments. Well, they did have, they did have a sponsorship of F1 and F2 drivers. But I don't think that's really it. I think really it's just everything that's going on on Phantom. There's this there's this good account on uh, Twitter called Stater Phantom and lists 22 reasons to be excited about Phantom's 2022. And primarily, most of these are just metrics, right? And, and all the metrics are just insane. You look at a number of addresses. I just talked about Bitcoin address. Number of addresses on Phantom is going by up by leaps and bounds over 2.5 million addresses and they have more <laughs> more um more transactions now than sometimes even ethereum so think about that the number of dApps over 200 and still growing right um over 7 billion in tvl the number of verified contracts Go up 42 percent no 42 x within 2022 versus 2021 right and it goes on and on and on you get the point though right so this is why one of the reasons why i love phantom because they have a lot going for them and just because one person left does not mean that this whole thing is going to collapse right so very good for phantom also, this morning, I was looking into Chili's. I, mean, I know I've been supporting Chili's for a while, but it's been pretty stagnant as of late until I realized, well, no, it's actually not stagnant. They're about to release their Chili's 2.0 chain, and I kind of missed this. I was looking it up. Basically, Chili's is going to build a brand new chain for their whole ecosystem, for so -so Socios, their app, and they're going to introduce a lot more things like staking. And of course, they're involved with NFTs, 
right? And this will be built on Binance Smart Chain and be EVM compatible. So there's a lot of things coming, which is why I think there's a lot of excitement building up why they're going up. And some people have asked about Anchor, and this is a different Anchor. This is not Anchor by Terra. This is Anchor Anchor, which is a mining play. They help they help individuals like you and I to create nodes for for staking and mining, liquid mining and liquid staking, right? Uh, but they are partner up with Chili's in terms of building out this new chain for them. So good, exciting partnership. So that's pretty good for Anchor and Chili's. But this is the reason why there's more excitement with Chili's. And I think they're going to be in a really good spot in the future. So there's that. Um, of course, there's a lot of talk about Luna still. How much are they buying? Just yesterday, CryptoLark reported that they bought $800 billion already. But... Uh, others are saying it's a little bit less now. It's more like 500 billion, but regard, I mean, million, not billion. But you know, they plan on buying three billion overall, short term, 10 plus billion long term. So this is still ongoing, and many are just you know raving about Terra and UST right now. Mazzari, I saw um, Anthony Papagliano. Right, even some of the big Bitcoin maxis are coming to love Terra because of what they're doing, buying Bitcoin to back UST, and it's really nice, really nice. And I'm waiting for more of those buys to happen on Binance, and I'm driving the shorts out. That's what I'm waiting for. A lot more of it. Uh, Doe even, you know, he dared people to go short. Bitcoin. Uh, Cadena, also Cadena is having a good day up above, above $7. So they were recently listed on OKCoin, OK and you could also stake on OKCoin, OK which is an exchange, a smaller exchange, not a whole lot of attention, but they are a smaller exchange based in the US. Um, and you know what? That's one more centralized exchange that supports Cadena. Binance also added them. So that's positive. But of course, the big thing is their DEX. Cadex Dex is done, 100% done, about to be released, which means TVL will be growing in the near future, and that's what we want. Let's go help Cadena tremendously going forward. So that's the latest of Cadena. Also, Algorand. I saw Algorand is doing pretty good today. Actually, just been, you know, just kind of recovering, right? Kind of recovering. And I was looking at it. They have several big things going on right now. For example, there is this music festival, Ultra 2022. And there's just, just a lot of participants. It's starting today, tomorrow, ending on 27th. And this is powered by Algorand. It's going to be streamed on Algorand. So that's pretty positive. There's other things going on. Uh, they're doing a protocol upgrade, which will make Algorand more scalable, right? And there's a new version of Algorand's wallet. This all came out within the last few days, but it's starting to trickle. So Algorand actually has a lot of developments going on right now as well. So definitely don't want to see, sleep on Algorand. All right, guys. I think that's pretty much it. You know, Bitcoin still kind of kind of hovering here. Right, um, but this weekend, see some good movement. We could see some good movement. You know, and, and even if we don't. Here's the thing, and I've been saying this: you, you got to realize, Bitcoin is starting to decouple away from the stock market. Right, we've seen like almost like a one-to-one -one ratio when it comes to Bitcoin's movement with Nasdaq. But recently, not so much. Nasdaq has been doing bad. I mean, even today, down almost a percent. But if you look at the whole week, NASDAQ has been down. The last week has been down. Tech stocks are getting hammered outside of just a few like Tesla and and uh, and Bitcoin-related uh, stocks that have been going up. But NASDAQ has been getting killed. So the fact that we're starting to see that decouplization, I don't even know that's a word, decouplization, and <laughs> you're seeing Bitcoin not only go up, but entire market starting to move up. It's not big rally mode. We're not going up like 20% in a day, but like small steps upwards, very encouraging and very positive. And we're definitely moving in the right direction. So you guys have to stay patient. It's not like the days before. I know before 2019, 2020, even parts of 2021, we've seen 
Bitcoin pump up 15% and all coins go up like 20% in a day, right? I know those are exciting days, but uh, we also seen days where those crash 20% or 30% in a day. It doesn't feel good, right? So right now we're making like slow babies footsteps upwards and I don't think that's a bad thing. You just have to you just have to be patient. You just have to be patient and stay in the game. But you know, today overall still a pretty good day. Most crypto are still in the green. Terra's in the green, Solana's in the green, Solana's still above hundred, Avalanche, Polkadot, all in the green. You know, yesterday even Doge was very in green. You know, many projects in the green. Ethereum in the green, Bitcoin is in green. Cardano kind of sold off today. Don't know why. They actually had a really good week. You can see they're up 31% for the week, but down 5% today. But you know what? I, I, I said this too. When Cardano was under a buck, they were at like 80 cents recently. Like 82 cents, 83 cents. I said under a dollar, it's a good bargain. You would be up 30%. <laughs> 30%. Exactly. Had you just bought you know, in the 80s. Right, so there's definitely money to be made. You just have to, you just have to be patient in DCA. It's really that simple. All right, guys, let's do some Q and A. Now, oh, I did mention, I did mention, I have a giveaway today because today is Friday, and I'm feeling good, and I know most of you guys are feeling good. So, let's do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway, and this one is gonna be harder. Right? I've been making it too easy for you guys. I've been giving away my precious strap-on NFTs, which will be concluding in six days now. So if you want to grab one yourself, you can hurry up and grab one, uh, or you can try to win one right now. So I'm going to give away five more of these. I've been giving away five like pretty much every week. But it's been too easy, so I'm going to make it hard for you guys. So you guys know. You guys know that I've been getting into sneakers, right? So you may see the one behind me right now is blurred out, but some of you sneakerheads probably know what it is. If you can identify which sneaker that is, the addition and the, the colorway, exactly, <laughs> I will give you one. I will give you one. So I know a lot of you guys are into sneakers. So post it. Post your answer and your Ethereum address in the live chat, and I will send you one at the end of the stream, right? Or, or sometime this weekend. There you go. You have to give the colorway too. You can't just guess the edition. You have to give the. You have to guess the colorway. Man. There's a lot of you guys that really know sneakers. I did not think there would be this many people that be answering this quickly. <laughs> I really thought you guys, I, I really thought only like five of you guys would know it. But so far, you guys have not guessed the, the only a few has guessed the, the colorway, but most of you guys have not. Charles, I appreciate that super chat. Uh, afternoon dip, no bueno. Got to wait it out, man. You got to wait it out. What's another, what's another day or two or week or month? Would you wear the Nike, uh, Ben and Jerry? I don't, I'm not heard. Of, I'm not familiar with that one. All right, some of you guys are saying, no, no, it's the one behind me, not the one I showed yesterday. People are posting answers from yesterday. No, it's the one behind me right now. Anyways, all right, I think most, I, I think enough people are answered, all right? So those of you guys that got it, got it. Those of you guys that didn't, unfortunately, there'll be more, there'll be more. I don't think the I am Jordan NFT is gonna sell out but who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the last few days? But uh, if I do have some left, I will continue to um, give them out in the future. But I have another, I have a few really good ones that you guys will love coming up. And the Batman one is still ongoing. So there you go. All right, let's do the QA.
This is refreshed. CMC Auto refreshes every like six seconds or ten seconds. So, yeah, this is refreshed. Okay, a little bit more in the red. Now that's refreshed. But, you know, 24 hours is deceiving too. Because, you know, sometimes a lot of these coins pump up, right? They pump up and then it comes down a little bit. And it's measuring, like, at the point where it was at peak. So that's why it's a little bit down. So that's why I put out the 7-day, 30-day, 90-day, year-to-date, right? So 7-day, you look at it, almost everything's in the green. So we had a pretty good week this week. 30-day, we had a pretty good month. Right, but 90 day year to date still mostly in red, which means that we have not fully recovered, and I fully recognize that, and I see that as a good thing, right? Because you want to buy when things are low, you want to buy when others are fearful, you don't want to buy after everything pumps to a new high and is at an all time high, right? That's not what you want to do. So the fact that yeah, we're starting to see recovery, slow and steady stair step up is good. We're getting that momentum back, but the fact that we're still below our all-time high, which is good, which means there's still opportunity to buy, right? And many of you guys are DCAing over weeks, months, years, right? You're continuing to DCA. Well, your dollar cost averaging your price down right now, and that's fantastic. That's the best way to look at it. There's too many people that will only buy after full verification that we're in like full-blown like rally mode or, you know, parabolic mode. But that's usually when they get in that top and things come down and then they just like rage quit, right? You want to buy when things are low and when there's uncertainty and panic, that's when you do it. So, yeah, we got ways to go, but that's okay. What's another? We've been in it. Uh, or I know I've been in it since 2000. 13 but a lot of you guys have only been in crypto for maybe several months two three four months maybe a year gotta have some patience all right uh you guys don't need to to uh spam any more uh addresses so we got our five winners got our five winners Um, I wish I had a job. Well, go, go get a side hustle, man. There's plenty of stuff that you could do. Go get a side hustle. Go get a side job. Uh, do something because if you don't have that extra cash on the side, you're not able to DCA. You're not able to buy the dip. You're not able to pick up anything. I've been trying to buy at lows. I'm nearly back at all-time high with a small rally. Nick, congratulations. You've been doing it right. You've been doing it right. Uh, some says do OnlyFans. <laughs> hey, if you're, if you're hot and attractive, why not? Why not? Um, Charles asked about Cody. I don't know if... Any big things that have happened with Cody recently? They're still working on DJed, which is you know a stable coin for um, for Cardano. You know Ada Pay. I don't know how widely used it is, or it's still in infancy. That's backed by Cody. I mean, that's pretty much what's going on right now. I haven't heard of any other big developments. Will you be buying some apes soon? Are you, are you talking about the NFT? Yeah. I want to. I can't. I still think they're too high. I'm hoping they come down, but they just don't seem to want to come down. Right? Just like Bitcoin. Kronos is my life now. Forget Doge. 
CRO for life. Well, I think that's a much better, much better hold. Even though Doge is not going to go away, it recently pumped. Uh, ATM added a lot of, or added support for Doge. But, you know, CRO, I think, has a lot of potential. Avalanche, I do like Avalanche quite a lot. They have a lot of things going on. I just talked about them recently. Apecoin, yeah, I said Lazaro. I, I actually said, um, again, just a few days ago when I built out this new portfolio, I said Apecoin should be in there because I think Board A Yacht Club and Yuga Labs, they're going to do some amazing things with what they have. They own, they dominate the NFT industry and they're going to come out with metaverses or their metaverse. And I think ApeCoin is going to be part of that. So I, I, I think they're going to do well. I think they're going to do well. What is the next Lego? I've been trying to finish up all the heads, the Lego heads. I have like every single one. There's one that I'm missing, which is the... Um, I forgot which one. It's the... It's like the fighter one, the fighter jet one. It's like a stormtrooper looking helmet, but it's black. And I don't know why Lego retired it really quick. So now you can't get it and you have to like overpay for it. And I don't want to overpay for it. Kurt, I have no idea what you're talking about. So I don't know what. DeFi era verse Gen Zero Defera's verse. I don't know. I don't know. Would you consider getting land on Sandbox? I've thought about that, but I don't know. I'm maybe sometime, but right now, no. I'm, I'm more thinking about just getting NFTs. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Uh, what do you want me to say about Wax P? I think wa Wax Wax a hard time building momentum. I think mostly because their token economics sucks. They have five different tokens, and um, and I, I'm not even sure what all of them do. But there's a lot of games and NFTs, um, you know, residing on Wax's chain. And they do have a big marketplace, but they seem to have problems holding their momentum. Um, so there's not much else I could say about them. Crypto fear and greed index has been a while, Jim. It, it's irrelevant. <laughs> it goes up and down. That's why I have not been showing it. I think last time I checked, it's like in the 40s. Uh, you know, why I say it's irrelevant is this. Even when it's in the 20s and we're in extreme fear and fear, it's just really ridiculous to be in extreme fear or extreme fear when Bitcoin is above 40,000 versus when it was at 4,000, right? So that that's kind of the thing. But right now, I have not been showing you because it's not, not really relevant. What is relevant is the growing adoption, the growing metrics, the fundamentals that keep getting better. That is what we need to focus on, not what other people think about market sentiment, right? Whether or not the fear level is at 20s or 30s or 40s, right, doesn't really matter. That's just, the, that's just people's opinions, right? You want to focus on what truly matters, which is the growing adoption, the number of institutions and countries buying, right? That is what's most important. Dot is a long-term winner. I, I think Dot is a long-term winner. I do think so. They get overlooked by many. That's for sure. Um, Algorand. I just covered Algorand. And I think there's a lot, a lot of goodness going on. With them. Uh, thoughts on Morrow down 6% today. You know, here's the thing with stocks, right? Oh, now we got a little bit of green. 
Oops, I spelled that wrong. I think Mara had a pretty good day yesterday. Bitcoin stocks or stocks that have exposure to Bitcoin, I don't trust because the Wall Street guys like to hammer on them. You know, like you'll see like huge sudden dips out of nowhere, right? For no reason, even on good Bitcoin days sometimes, right? That's why I have a hard time holding like Bitcoin stocks or Bitcoin related stock stocks, excuse me, because Wall Street just tends to hammer them and they don't really make a whole lot of traction. That's why it's better to just stick with Bitcoin, in my opinion. Uh, I heard Australia minted its first CBDC. It's called a dollar sign DCAU. What are your thoughts? I did not hear that. I don't know if that's officially their <laughs> CBDC or there's some other association that or some other company created it. I don't. I don't think that's true. Because Australia, I know that's not true. Because Australia is still trying to pass their. Um, oh, there was some kind of new. Um, new law that they were trying to approve basically to make them more crypto friendly so i don't don't think that's true sailor needs to buy exchange on exchanges like luna yeah that would make a big that would make a big big impact although i haven't heard of him buying bitcoin recently he seems to have stopped he was like DCAing every single time Bitcoin dipped and he recently stopped. Check out the new Boston project growing so quickly. It already have P2P wallets and big community. Boston. Okay, it's not even showing up. What what is the new Boston brought? New Boston. Uh, nothing. Crypto artist. I don't I don't know what it is. You gotta give me the symbol. In your video interview that you posted yesterday, you talked about something called spread. I realized Coinbase increasing the display price. I don't think I did an interview. Um, are you talking about when I was talking about Voyager? Voyager spread. It's just the difference the difference between the buy and sells, right? So, or are you talking about when I was talking about Bitcoin ATMs? So probably what I was talking about Bitcoin ATMs. Like if you go on a Bitcoin ATM you'll, and you want to buy, okay, it'll probably list Bitcoin at forty five thousand. So, okay, so you're 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 getting ripped off. But then you want to sell Bitcoin, it'll probably list it at forty three thousand. So that's like a two thousand spread between the buy and the sell. That's what I mean. I think that's what you're asking about. But anyways, don't use Bitcoin ATMs. You're just going to get ripped off either way. Either selling or buying, you'll get ripped off on Bitcoin ATMs. Um, let's see. A lot of you guys got it. This is my newest pair. And most of you guys got it. This is actually not Candy Cane. This is Jordan 14 Rip Hamilton. Although Candy Cane, I think it's the same colorway. I don't know. They just named it twice. But this is cool. Fun fact. Jordan wore Jordan 14 last game against Utah Jazz when he hit that famous shot. That last game, he wore it one game. That's it. And then he retired. So... But he did actually wear a Jordan 14 for a real game. <laughs> but this is like kind of like a low top, high top. So it's kind of like a mid top. That's why I like it. I didn't like it at first. I thought this is a goofy design. But after I stared at it for many hours and I'm like, okay, this is a pretty nice shoe. Nice soft leather in the middle. There's a lot of variations for this. There's a low, 
low top of this, which looks really, really weird to me. But this was supposed to be designed after uh, it was inspired by Ferrari. And they actually have a really cool, like, one that actually looks like a Ferrari shoe. But yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Um, there you go. A little fun fact about Jordan 14s. Make sure you store all these kicks in a temporary temperature control room. Those things will crumble if you don't care for them after a decade. You know, thanks for the tip, but I, I don't think I'm going to be holding on to these for, for 10 years. To just, <laughs> just to be honest. Um, will you buy Axie again or not? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I probably will. After things calm down a little bit. I really love, I really love like the later Jordans, like the 13, 12, and uh, 11s. I think 11s look cool, but there's not a lot of good variations on the 11s because it's like so, so shiny below, right? Um, there's a variation, I think it's called reverse tuxedo. For low top for the 11s, I really want, but it's really hard to get. So I'm like, all right. It's okay. All right, guys. I think that's pretty much it. Um, you know, Bitcoin has come down a little bit, but it's okay. It's okay. We could see some good movement this week. Even if don't, I mean this weekend, even if we don't, Bitcoin is going the right direction. Crypto is recovering nicely. We're not fully recovered, but that's okay. That's okay. That gives us more opportunities to buy, right? And that's it. That's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, today is Friday, so I'm not going to be streaming tonight. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, and we'll see where Bitcoin and crypto is tomorrow. All right, guys, and uh, thanks for playing, and congratulations to the five people that won. Smash it a like, subscribe to the channel, and before I go, you know what? Uh, I gotta play this. I gotta play this. You know, no one asked me about it, but I have to play it anyways. Take care. Bye bye. What do you think about Ripple? Well, I mean, I think it's too centralized, but I definitely want to meet Chris Larson. <laughs> <laughs>